bias estimator of uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimator and we have to check that whether a maximum likelihood estimator is a biased so consider the problem of uh, estimating the unknown mean x and variance sigma score of set k measurements so this equation has a k measurements like uh, z of j equal to x plus uh, omega of j where x is uh, non random variable uh, the likelihood function for unknown parameter we have here we find the likelihood function then apply uh, the derivative to obtain the maximum likelihood because we are uh, we do we do not have a uh, pure information p of x and uh, we just know the uh, x variable and the measurement uh, equation so we obtain the maximum likelihood uh, equals to uh, conditional probability of uh, k measurements uh, given x and sigma equals to this uh, equation this is Gaussian uh, equation for likelihood uh, here we can see that uh, the difference is between the uh, z measurement minus the x ok so uh, this x uh, is the true value of uh, the state because we do not have uh, p of x so we cannot consider here uh, x mean because we do not know p of x as we did in uh, the map estimator we included to z minus uh, x multiply z minus x mean so here we cannot uh, include this thing here we include only this portion because we do not know p of x and they do maximize the above equation apply derivative of log likelihood function we apply the logarithm and the derivative on both sides so that uh, this power will become a uh, base of the equation and we can apply derivative to the to this power and uh, we can ignore uh, other things like exponent we can ignore the exponent in the help of logarithm we can ignore the exponent and uh, like for example this equation will uh, will, will become uh, after applying the derivative with the logarithm on the right hand side so uh, after getting this result we can uh, take uh, this one of uh, sigma square over the uh, another side of the equal side when this guy goes to there it will become zero and the equation one it looks like uh, x equals to sigma j square uh, uh, x equals to summation of z of j okay so this equation is a, 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 a actually this one you can write here one upon x is as this is the average value of uh, of z terms so we can write this equation like this one x equals to one upon k summation of z of j and here uh, we can write here that this is maximum likelihood estimator okay like this one so the first equation is equals the maximum likelihood estimator as you can see in the equation number 11 section 2 uh, some ls estimator in this lecture and uh, now uh, we have derivative this equation with respect to x if we have the derivative this equation with respect to x, x then sigma will consider the constant because we are not the derivative this equation with respect to x okay we have to derivative with respect to x and with respect to sigma like this individually okay we have to apply partial derivative in the partial derivative as you know uh, one variable has to keep the constant and uh, other variable has to apply derivative so we apply partial derivative 
so first we derive to to derive the equation number 9 with respect to x now we are deriving same equation with respect to sigma so if we apply derivative with to this equation uh, then this equation will obtain this like this one okay so now the now uh, when we uh, take this variable k over sigma over this side is then this equation sigma q summation of uh, j z minus x square and because we are not uh, deriving this x variable we are just deriving sigma squared so, so this comes as a bracket with a square and uh, equals to zero this from here upon sigma uh, went through the other side it will become uh, like this uh, plus from k of sigma okay now we can put this uh, uh, variable sigma cube over this side cross multiply like this one here so here we can write this sigma cube so what happens the remaining term is uh, like this Momentum is like the k will become here again, and the remaining part is sigma square. Okay, so now this sigma square is nothing but your mean variance, your mean variance, like mean variance of the likelihood estimator, minimum likelihood estimator, like this one. Okay. So we have to solve uh, this equation. Apply derivative of logarithm equation uh, and uh, solve the uh, equation uh, of the logarithm with respect to x and with respect to sigma. And now, uh, as you can see, that uh, uh, in this equation we can put. Uh, X X X minimum like here. we can say that this this is now uh, X ML okay because the equation is same like this one okay if we put uh, X over here then X equals to one upon K summation of this and uh, this term so we can say this X is uh, nothing but uh, uh, X minimum like the estimator. So we can put this uh, in equation number 10b like this. So this is equation number 10b and this is equation number 10c where we have uh, replaced the x with the uh, x mentioned like the estimator. And the resulting estimate known as sample variance mean based on k observation is obtained by solving equation number c. If we solve this equation uh, like this one, like this, like this, then it will come to like that uh, the mm, estimator of mean variance likelihood estimator equals to this equation okay so uh, we can replace the value of uh, maximum likelihood estimator with this one from equation number 10 a so our final uh, mean variance equation is this one Okay. Uh, now we we have to check the mean means of the sample mean and sample variance. 
Okay, so denote uh, the true values of the parameter by x naught and sigma naught. The expected value of the sample mean is this one. Expected value of the uh, likelihood estimator equals to expected value of the uh, distribution is equals to x naught. So suppose if this equation is x naught like the above in equation but then a, then that is the sample mean estimator is unbiased, unbiased because the, uh, the when as we have already derived that what is un, uh, unbiased estimator is the expected value of the measurement equals the true measurement. If it equals the true value of the uh, of the parameters, uh, then it is called the unbiased. If it is uh, not equals to the true value, then it is either un either over bias or under bias okay so this equation can be said that this uh, estimator has a mean uh, which is uh, unbiased okay now uh, how about the expected value of the sample variance so we can take the uh, this equation and now we have to check this uh, whether it is unbiased or uh, biased. So this is the same question as we discussed here, like this one. Okay, so uh, to check the uh, expected value, we have to apply expected expectation on the both side. And uh, as we are talking about the sample variance, so we can replace the J or Z. We uh, can replace the Z with uh, with the omega uh, sorry we, we can replace this with the w this is not omega this is w so w of j equals to z, z of j so we can replace this omega uh, z uh, um, omega j uh, and this this term we can uh, we have replaced this z with the w of i now uh, Solving this equation like this one, 1 upon k summation j 1 to k expected value. Now we have to make a, uh, we have to take this k out of the, this synthesis. Okay, for this we have we do the LCM k and we can we, we have to uh, change some summation uh, because i tends to one to one tends to k uh, if we change something that like uh, here is j here is i so we have to consider this uh, in this part in this uh, w the i is not equal to j like this one so here if we do like this one omega oh uh, sorry w of j minus we have to change some summation like this one i equals to 1 and i is not equal to j i is not equal to j and w i is same and here is square so if we match to some change in this equation so we can write here x uh, k minus like this one so this equation having the square term like this so we take the lcm over here and we make some change in the summation and we consider we again that the, the i is not equal to j and it means we take we have taken j to value from this w and uh, keep it out, uh, uh, outside here okay so now uh, in this j uh, in this w there is uh, we have taken out uh, the k minus one like this one here okay now if we uh, uh, take the k outside the parenthesis then it will be k square because this uh, term having a square okay so 
if we uh, take uh, out the k of the parentheses, then the k square multiply the k will become one one k cube summation and remain for the same. Now, if we solve the uh, square term, then this equation will, will become six like this one and omega uh, sorry w w square equal to sigma square because this is variance and this means that uh, we are talking about the uh, noise Gaussian variable this is the w is a Gaussian having zero mean and variance sigma okay so uh, like this w is Gaussian normal Gaussian W is a normal Gaussian like this having zero mean and sigma square. Okay, so and uh, uh, similarly we uh, as uh, we have uh, this W is a zero mean and Gaussian square, so we can replace this thing easily. That W square here is equal to sigma square. So here we put. Uh, sigma square, we also would put sigma square. Okay, take the sigma square common like this one. We have taken the sigma square in common, and, and the remaining part is this one. So, if we solve this one, this equation will become so. Now, the, the equation number 11 having the sample variance is unbiased. So, uh The sample variance 11 is is biased. Sample variance is biased because the variance is not equal to the true value. It, it, it is included with k minus 1 over the k. So due to k minus 1 over the k, uh, the equation 11, uh, the variance expected value of the sample variance in equation 11 is biased. And you cannot say this is unbiased. So even though it becomes unbiased, as k tends to infinity, that is, it is isentropic, uh, isentrop, isentropically unbiased. In order to unbiased, the denominator in 11, like this, this is equation number 11, should be k minus 1. So, denominator should be k minus 1 rather than k. If it is k minus 1, then k minus 1 and k minus 1 cancel each other. Okay. So, the, in order to unbiased, the denominator in 11 should be k minus 1 rather than k. So, uh, equation number 14, this equation we, have, we can replace to 1 upon k minus 1. Okay, like this one, so it becomes uh, this equation. So, normally uh, this equation is most uh, common sample variance which is used in the tracking system. So, we have to replace this 1 upon k with 1 minus k oh, or you can consider this k as a infinity okay or if you can consider that uh, it has a limit tends to infinity so mostly uh, we use this equation so that the uh, estimator must be unbiased. Okay. Now consistency and efficiency of the estimator. An estimator uh, of a non-random parameter is said to be consistent estimator if the estimate which is a, a random variable converges to the true value in some stochastic sense. It means uh, the estimator uh, is said to be consistent if the estimate of the state uh, meets the converge meet or converge uh, at the true value. Okay, so like this, if the, if the expected value of uh, the estimator and the true value, uh, the difference between the estimator and the true value will, uh, must be equal to uh, zero. So, if, so this equation is said that. Uh, uh, convergence of the equation must meet at the same point 
is the connection for constituency in, in the mean square sign so the expression is taken over the zk okay so for non-random parameter the expansion is taken uh, with respect to the zk um, because uh, we do not know the p of x uh, the period information but in case of random parameter we uh, we know we uh, we know the p of x is the period information so in this case the although the variable is same but we can say the expectation is taken over the zk and the x so here for random parameter we know the p of x comes like the like in the matrix metal this is for the like you just imagine like you estimator uh, this is for the imagine like a whole estimator and uh, uh, non random parameter and this is for the random parameter so for random parameter convergence of this is to estimator in the mean square sense requires the expected value of the estimator uh, k uh, comma z k minus x here x is is not uh, this one this is uh, the the true value this is the true uh, true value without payroll information okay without payroll information means uh, we do not know p of x we just know the initial value of the x and we do not know the the value of x in the next time scan we just uh, know the initial value and uh, we consider this value is the true value but uh, we don't do not know the any information about this value and uh, we cannot uh, uh, calculate the posterior posterior value of the x here we can calculate the posterior uh, value of the x because we know the p of x is the period information so this x and this x is different this x also this x is the true value and this x is also the true value but uh, this x is uh, uh, is uh, cal calculated by the estimator okay this value is uh, is calculated by the estimator like uh, the p of x so uh, its convergence of the uh, uh, convergence of its estimator in the mean square time is this one. It means the estimator needs uh, the value of the x then uh, uh, equals to uh, in, a, in, a, in other sense the error of the estimator is zero then the estimator is said to be consistent. Okay. Similarly. To the unbiased case, confidence can be expressed as the, as the requirement that the estimation error converges to zero. Okay, like this one, in an, an unbiased case, if the uh, estimation error is zero, then uh, we can say that uh, the estimator is confident. We have the same uh, scenario that uh, the x meets the x or the difference between the expected value of the this thing difference between this equals to zero now uh, the final topic is uh, according to uh, the current row lower bound and uh, the information uh feature information matters uh, according to the Kerman row lower bound the, the mean square error, error corresponding to, to the estimator of a parameter cannot be smaller than the certain quantity related to the likelihood function. Means there is some threshold that uh, uh, that will say that uh, your mean square error of the estimator cannot be smaller than some certain threshold, and that threshold is related to the likelihood function. So in the in, in the estimation of a scalar non random parameter x with an unbiased estimator, the variance is lower bounded as follows. Okay. The expected value of uh, uh, this thing is uh, must be uh, lower bounded, like uh, this time greater than or equal to j inverse. So j inverse is the 
feature information in a grid view, and this one uh, which has actually value of the parcel differential, double parcel differential of the logarithm of the likelihood function with respect to x. Here we have to apply double derivative uh, of the logarithm of the likelihood function and uh, with respect to x, uh, where s has a limit to x naught. Okay, and uh, here um, is equals to the uh, partial derivative of, of uh, logarithm of likely function and uh, divided by uh, take the square uh, out of the parentheses because this discussion and this equation are both both are same, so we can take the square at the at the whole bracket like this one and uh, now if this term is a square power then we can write here this that we can assume that this is a plus sign because the whole power is a square and uh, even even and a square so uh, we can replace this minus with the plus sign and uh, here j is a special matrix um, like the equation equals to the lambda of x equals to conditional probability pdf of the z given x is a likely function and x naught is the true value of the unknown constant x so this is for the non-random parameter like in case of uh, the measuring like your estimator now for a scalar random parameter x estimated by unbiased estimator uh, this uh, S of Z. The event is bounded from below by a single expression, but uh, we just uh, replace the likely function with this one P of Z, comma X, because here we are considering the non random, uh, here we are considering the random parameter. It means we know the period information of the P of X, and uh, like in the case of the map estimator, so we can write here that. Uh, the here j is equal to has a variable of a double partial double partial derivative of the logarithm of the uh, this p of z comma x which can uh, with respect to uh, partial derivative of x, x, x square now we uh, in this equation and both are same we can write this equation like this one take the, the square the whole power of the square is 19. So, if an estimator variance is equal to the Kramer uh, law, law lower bound, then such an estimator is called efficient. So, this expedition 18 and 19 are taken as 15 and 16. So, just yes, this is. Uh, so please uh, repeat and uh, revise uh, the lecture by yourself. I have uploaded the uh, previous lecture video in the portal and uh, today's lecture video in the portal. And uh, both upload both lectures uh, uh, are uploaded in the portal. So uh, revise and listen again uh, to my lecture and try to understand. And use the book of uh, the uh, application to estimation with navi navigation. The book we are, which I have recommended in the first lecture. Uh, and uh, if you, if you uh, want to understand, then uh, you have to read the book to make better understanding of this lecture.